Uh, as usual, we go for, oops, very close. Okay, let's just start with a cold piece to Okay, let's just start. Okay, so you should not make a wrong answer for this. <laughs> okay, when we say cell, cell communication, um, this is more like checking the environment of other cells nearby, and then check whether I should divide or not, I should grow or not, this kind of normal communication we call cell cell communication. Okay. Cancer do not have this uh, the ability, that's why they grow uncontrolled way. Okay. okay, signal transduction was uh, defined as the signal cross plasma membrane. Okay. In cancers, those signal transduction, we believe is much more activated. A lot of activation signal was transferred from outside to the cancer cell. Okay, the different from cell to cell communication. Cell to cell is more like regulation. Signal transduction is the signal from outside into the inside of the cells. And we believe this is increased in cancer. <laughs> wow. Three of you made the wrong answer. Okay, let me ask you. What is the, the function of kinase section? Uh, add phosphate. Add phosphate or phosphorylation, we call. Okay, phosphorylation. Now, phosphorylation is considered as an activation signal. Then kinase is the enzyme for phosphorylation. And in cancers, you can assume that kinase activity is quite high. If kinase activity is high in cancer, kinase inhibitor can be good 
kinase can be a good target for cancer treatment, isn't it? So kinase activity is usually high. What is the opposite enzyme for the function of a kinase? Do you? Phosphorylase. Um, mm, mm, similar name, but different. Phosphatase. Phosphatase, okay. Phosphorylase is by adding phosphorus, the phosphate, cleave something. That's a phosph the phosphorylase. Okay, those two, last time we uh, touch it. Phosphatase is removing phosphate. Anybody uh, remember the number of kinase and phosphatase in our body? Which had a higher number? Kinase. Kinase, kinase. kinase uh, about how many? 500. 500. About 500. Phosphatase? 100. 100. About 100. Okay. So kinase need a lot more specific interaction. Phosphatase is just an eraser. Just remove almost uh, the randomly. Less specific than kinase. Okay. This is a surprising. <laughs> okay, what is a telomere? Who made this at the force? Answer. Hey, confess. Who made this a two force answer? Me. Me. Uh, Sejin and Doyun. Sejin. Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. Uh, Doyun, what is a telomere? Uh, telomere is end of the D DNA. Sequence. Okay, the end part of the DNA. And to divide the cell, the, the, this telomere becomes shorter and shorter. Because of the fragment, what is the name of the fragment? Hmm. Oops. Direction, depending on the direction of a DNA synthesis, one strand can be synthesized continuously. The other strand cannot be, so it should have some form of a fragment and then connect it later, right? What is the name of that fragment? Someone? Somebody's name, right? Okazaki. Okazaki fragment. Because of this Okazaki fragment issues, the end, end position of the DNA becomes shorter and shorter because exactly the right end cannot be connected. That's why it becomes shorter and shorter. If the telomeres becomes shorter, then the cell lifetime becomes shorter and shorter too. Somehow, these cancer cells, they recover the ability to re-increase those telomere into normal, normal or maybe even longer. That's why the, uh, the cancer cells can live forever. Okay, so telomere is longer in cancers. What made, what made you do, what confused you, Sejin? Because the cancer cell is divided quickly than normal cell, I think <laughs> the telomere is broken faster. Yeah, that's a one side you can think, but they should, because they divide fast, so they should have another mechanism to compensate it. Okay, very good. Anybody can define the difference between necrosis and apoptosis? Nobody? Okay, let me summarize one more time. Apoptosis is a very clean death. You write will. You know, will, right? Will is a user. And then you leave a message to your neighbors and families, and then divide the leftover money to those. So if the cells go into the apoptosis, it's a programmed or planned death. That's why 
they divide any kind of leftover material given out to, to neighboring cells, and all the materials can be recycled. And the cell size becomes smaller and smaller, and then DNA is uh, fragmented, and then eventually it is uh, shrinked and disappear. It's very clean that. So it does not leave any harmful material behind. That's apoptosis. Necrosis is accidental death. It's like a car accident. You are hit by a car. There is no chance to, to no chance and no, no time to write will. No time to prepare to giving out my material. It's just exploding of the cells. Then it looks very ugly. And also it generates a lot of toxic material around. So it generates a lot of inflammation and a lot of problems around. That is a necrosis. So if the cancer grows, cancer size becomes bigger and bigger, then inner side, inner side of a cancer is, has a very different environment from the outside. It doesn't have enough food. It doesn't have enough oxygen. That's why that area is a very difficult area for cells, normal cells to live. And some cells die ugly, so by necrosis. So some bad the death is happening inside of the cancer too. Well, both of them is the cell death. One is clean death and necrosis is a very bad death. And inflammation is induced by necrosis. Cancer cells, you can assume, energy consumption will be increased because they need to divide fast, then they use a lot of, uh, a lot of energy. It does not mean that energy is used efficiently. Okay. Next week, we are going to study the cancer metabolism. Metabolism is a change, and you will find out that the metabolism is not efficient. They use a lot of energy, but they use it in uh, the in inefficient way dna synthesis is increased because to make more cells they need to uh, synthesize the dna quite quickly okay move on still it's not very clean. DNA methylation, epigenetic effect. DNA methylation, if it is high, then gene suppression. Gene expression is suppressed. In cancers in general, DNA methylation is decreased. And many genes can be expressed. Right? In cancer and in embryonic stem cell, they have a similar the phenomena that DNA methylation is lower. If meiosis is not increased, what is increased? Mitosis. Mitosis is increased. Right? Meiosis is uh, dividing the genetic information into half. Meiosis is the process to make a sperm cell or egg cell. Right? So cancer cells do not make sperm or cancer egg cell. They always divide into the same two, mitosis, well, sometimes they cannot divide. They synthesize the DNA. So original status, original amount of DNA is a 2N. And they, since they finish the synthesis, they become 4N. And mitosis is broken and they cannot divide. Then one cell contains a 4N, it's a possible. And even further, make one more copy, 6N or 8N, that kind of a very strange, gigantic cell is also found in cancer cells. So mitosis is increased, not meiosis.
Okay. Today, before we finish uh, the, this week's uh, the topic of uh, conventional cancer drugs, Sejin and Juhan will uh, the talk about uh, different mechanism of conventional cancer drugs. And one of those mechanisms is alkylating cancer drugs. The target is the DNA. To attack the cancer, attacking DNA or DNA synthesis blocking is one very common way to use as a cancer drug. Okay, so let's start. DNA synthesis is a one target. The other very popular target is cell division, mitosis. And uh, the, around those cell division, there are several different targets, but one mechanical target for cell division is microtubule. And very famous anti-cancer drug for attacking microtubules is a Texel. Texel is a stabilizing, sorry, Texel is an over-stabilizing microtubule. That's, that's how it blocks the proper cell division. Opposite method to unstabilize microtubule. And that reagent is also can be used as an anti-cancer drug. And that drug is also used to make seedless melon. Do you know the compound name? Invented by Korean Japanese Woo Jang Chun, which is used to make Siamnan Suba. Anybody knows that drug name? Wow. When I was at uh, middle school or high school, I learned that kind of uh, the stuff in the science um, the class. Maybe in your generations, you do not, you do not learn it. The compound name is a coltichin. That compound is also being used as an anti-cancer drug, but opposite function for the microtubule from Texel, but same target. Okay. Okay, let's move into today's lecture. Okay, this is the second class of uh, uh, cancer and treatment targeting uh, the conventional anti-cancer drugs. So today I chose three other speakers. Sejin will talk about, Sejin has very good classification of uh, different anti-cancer drugs, conventional anti-cancer drugs. Juhan made a little different point of those, so I invited Juhan too. And if Juhan sees some of the your material is overlapped with Sejin, then you may just simply summarize, you don't need to repeat the whole things, okay? And then, uh, as a third, Yong Hun will talk about the, one of those, the problem of cancer, metastasis, okay? In this order, we'll have uh, the presentation. So Sejin, would you share your file? Okay, we can see it. You may start. Your mic is off. Sajin. All right, now do you hear me? Yep, very good. All right. Well, let me start. Hello, this is Sejin. Let's talk about some, some types of conventional chemotherapy, especially the DNA replication blocker. Uh, the concept of cancer is firstly described 
in a scientific way by the famous Hippocrates. He considered the tumor as a disease caused by the imbalance of body. Over the ancient Egyptian, Greek, and Roman age, the surgical strategies for cancer treatment had been carried out. After the development of radiotherapy in the early 1900s, the modern oncology began with the discovery of the first chemotherapeutic drugs around 1940. Uh, subsequently, a breakthrough in the field of medical oncology occurred with the development of tar targeted therapy in 1980, which determined an improvement in the effective effectiveness of cancer treatment. And the last turning point took place in 2010 with the introduction of immune checkpoint inhibitors for the treatment of advanced and metastatic tumors. Targeted therapy and immunotherapy will be covered later. Today we are just focusing on this chemotherapy. So chemotherapy is a way to treat cancer using drugs to interfere with process involved in a progression through the cell cycle. As shown in figure, the major classes of drugs work at various steps in the process of DNA replication at S page and cell division at M page. I'm covering the S page blocker. The drugs work at all of these levels of nucleotide synthesis or DNA replication process. Although you have already seen those once in a lecture video, I hope you listen carefully in the sense of reviewing this. So the first is alkylating agents. Alkylating agents are the oldest group of chemotherapies in use today. They bind covalently to N7 position of guanine nucleotide in DNA with their alkyl group. It can cause either intrastrand or interstrand crosslink. In any case, if the cell tries to replicate cross-linked DNA during cell division, or tries to repair it, the DNA strand can break, leading to apoptosis. This cycle of post is the most widely used articulating agent. You need to remember the name of modern times. The main use of cycle of post is with other chemotherapy agents like surgical or radiotherapy in the treatment of lymphomas, some forms of neuroblastoma, leukemia, and some solid tumors. Because it can induce beneficial immunomodulatory effect, it has relatively little typical chemotherapy toxicity than others. Second is antimetabolites. Antimetabolites are a group of molecules that impede DNA and RNA synthesis itself. They resemble nucleoside structure but have altered groups. These drugs exert their effect by either blocking the enzymes, the enzymes required for DNA synthesis. By inhibiting these enzymes, they prevent mitosis because the DNA cannot duplicate itself. Unlike articulating agent, antimetabolites are cell cycle dependent, which means that they only work during a specific part of the cell cycle in the, in the S page. Um, methotrexate inhibits dihydropolate reductase. These are required for timidulate and purine production, which are both essential for DNA synthesis 
and cell division. Fluorouracil is a nuclear-based analog that is metabolized in cells to form FDUMP. FDUMP inhibits the enzyme that demethylates synthase, leading to cell death again. Third is topoisomerase inhibitors. They affect the activity of both topoisomerase 1 and topoisomerase 2. By inhibiting those enzymes, DNA strand cannot reduce the, ten the topological tension. This prevents DNA replication and transcription, cause trend break, DNA strand break, and lead to the cell death. All of those drugs have same mechanism. They finally lead to the cell death. The final one is cytotoxic antibiotics. They are a varied group of drugs that have various mechanisms of action. The most important subgroup is the anthracycline and the bleomycin. The mechanism of those drugs include DNA intercalation, which means the molecules insert between the two strands of DNA, or generation of highly free radicals, which are very harmful, and the topoisomerase inhibition, like those drugs. So actually, the chemotherapy does not always work, and even when it is useful, it may not completely destroy the cancer. It, target, it targets cells that grow and divide quickly, unlike radiation or, or surgery, which target specific areas. Chemotherapy can work, work throughout your body, whole your body. It can also affect some fast-growing normal cells, like those of skin, hair, intestines, and bone marrow. In case of brain tumor, chemotherapy agent cannot be delivered. Brain has a special system to protect it from harmful chemicals called blood-brain barrier, BBB, which makes the drugs have low efficacy for brain tumors. And those drugs have resistance. Resistance is a major cause of treatment failure in chemotherapy drugs. There are a few possible causes of resistance in cancer, one of which is the presence of small pumps on the surface of cancer cells that actively move chemotherap chemotherapeutic agent from inside to the outside. Another mechanism of resistance is gene amplification, a process in which multiple copies of a gene are produced by cancer cells. This overcomes the effect of drugs that reduce the expression of genes involved in replication. With more copies of the gene, the drug cannot prevent or expression of the gene, and therefore the cell can restore its proliferative ability. Upregulation of these genes can overcome the DNA damage and prevent the induction of apoptosis. And mutation in genes that produce drug target proteins, such as tubulin, can occur, which prevent the drugs from binding to the protein, leading to resistance to these types of drugs. So to, to solve those problems, next generation therapy started to come up and, and now dominate most of biopharmaceutical market. We will cover this next class. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Sejin. <coughs> Any question to Sejin?
Everything is clear. I, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, the end of the presentation or uh, the resistance of uh, yes, this slide is uh, is it is only cancer stem cell have the resistance for drug drug efflux? Uh, actually, I don't think I don't think so. This picture just summarize any possible uh, resistance mechanism. Not all cancer cells have all of this mechanism. They can have one of those mechanism. It can be cancer stem cells or the differentiated cancer cells. Okay. In this picture, Sajin made an interesting point that you know, cancer cells are damaged by different anti-cancer drugs. But eventually, whether the drug itself can kill cancer or the cancer cells are damaged and they may go through apoptosis anyway. So some people believe that any cancer drug's effect is eventually ended up with the apoptosis. That's a good cancer cell, cancer cancer drug. If the cells induce necrosis, then it may generate a lot of damages to other normal tissues. So enhancing apoptosis is the most important, some people believe. And in this picture also, caspase is also related to apoptosis. And any damages at the one point the surgeon mentioned about the apoptosis. So any damaged cancer cells by cancer drug, they may go through apoptosis. Okay, any other question? Sajin, would you go to the structure of a uh, articulating reagent? By looking at it, not the other one. Yeah, this compound. This compound, chemically speaking, this compound is making covalent binding. Is this nucleophile or electrophile? I think by this point, you may have learned nucleophile, electrophile from organic chemistry class, I think. This articulating reagent, is this electrophile or nucleophile? So, what do you say? Nucleophile. Nucleophile, which is a nucleophilic center? Cl chloro. Chloride is a chloride. nucleophile. Any other opinion? Nitrogen. Nitrogen is a nucleophile. Sajin, would you take down your file? Okay, I think you see other my slide. Now here, this chloride is a so-called leaving group. Then nucleophile comes in here and attack here, and then this group is removed. And that's how covalent binding can be formed. This structure, alkyl halide, this is a typical electrophile. Of course, this nitrogen maybe can act as a nucleophile, but if this attacks here, then this is an intramolecular interaction. Then the product is like a triangular structure here. It doesn't do anything to the cancer cell. Cancer cell's structure may be DNA. Nucleophile of a nitrogen is attack here and then make a covalent binding here. Chemically speaking, in our body, protein or carbohydrate, we have a, a lot of nucleophiles, oxygen and nitrogens, but we don't have many electrophiles, okay? That's why to make a covalent binding, 
when we add those chemical drugs into our body, usually we add electrophile, not nucleophile. Okay. If you add a nucleophile into our body, there is no partner to react. So that's why this is kind of a mild electrophile. If it is, this is a very reactive nuclear, the electrophile, that becomes chemical weapons. Okay. If you look at the structure of a chemical weapons, you will find out that those chemicals are usually very reactive electrophiles. Okay, any other question to Sejin's presentation? Okay, if not, thank you, Sejin. And let's move on to second talk. Juan? Can you see my presentation? Okay, go ahead. Uh, hello, I'd like to briefly explain about chemotherapy. Uh, no, no, do you speak a little louder? Oh, wait a wait a moment. <coughs> uh, Better. Is it, okay, thank you. Uh, chemotherapy refers to the method of treating the chemotherapic agent, agent through proper chemotherapy Resume that approximately combines the those of uh, those of the drugs by utilizing about well, about one or more chemi chemotherapy agent. Uh, the left picture was mentioned by Sejin. Uh, the uh, this chemotherapy is the first generation of total uh, uh, treatment of cancer. And sometimes the doc, uh, doctors are mentioned the chemotherapy agent uh, uh, drugs by using uh, CMF, AC, or so, so on. So there are several indications of chemotherapy. So first of all is neo, neo, uh, uh, just bent cytostatic therapy. Uh, this means that uh, it, these therapies intend to prevent the damage to surrounding tissues before surgery and to minimize the possibility of uh, the rest, resting of the tissue. And the second method is the band cytostatic therapy. Uh, this is the way that uh, the professor mentioned at the previous class. Uh, this is the way to decrease the uh, tumor at the body. Uh, if we cannot use uh, any other methods such as surgery or radioactive method or so on. The third method, cyto, cyto -red reductive conditioning, is the way to uh, do such a uh, such high uh, stem cell transplantation or uh, bone marrow transplantation, uh, transplantation uh, because uh, if we transplant the new new cell to inside our body, there are such some uh, immune system in our body and they attack to, attack to newly come in cell. So it is very uh, critical for transplant transplantation uh, result in our body. So uh, we, uh, the doctors use uh, some therapy or method to decrease the, uh, the efficient uh, no, no, effect of uh, previously ex exist cells. The last way is palliative cytostatic therapy. Uh, this is uh, only prescribed by doctor to ele elevate the symptoms if the patient is unlikely to be completely cured. So uh, some patient like uh, three days or uh, three months or five months, one year later, uh, used to uh, serve this kind of therapy. 
And BSA is the most uh, important way to calculate the, the amount of the drug that patients should be taken the, the, the drugs. Uh, it is, uh, has two, two representative method, uh, Dubois method and Moistler method. But as you can see in the, uh, uh, under, under the calculation, uh, A, C, H, W, which mention body surface area, height in centimeters and weight. Uh, this use the, uh, the condition, condition of the patient physicals. So it estimate the volume, uh, if, if, uh, 최적화 된 volume as the, some, some of the algorithm. But, this kind of calcul uh, easy calculation is uh, sometimes have a trouble that about 10 times or even 100 times of drug concentration in people. So some, uh, some uh, so in these days, doctors use more detailed algorithm to calculate the major, uh, cal calculate the drug levels in blood plasma. And this is the general mechanism of chemotherapy. Uh, almost all of the mechanism is introduced by previous presentation, such as alkylating agent, topoisomerate inhibitors, and anti anti-metabolites. Uh, but uh, I am going to introduce about mitotic inhibitors. Uh, this one is uh, presented by at the our quiz time, this uh, arrest the cell cycle at mito, uh, mito, uh, metaphase, such uh, by affecting the cell, such as uh, destruction of tubulin in mito tubul, uh, mito tube, or just stabilize the mito tubulin, but so it affect. Uh, decrease the mitotic splinter in our cell. There are other enzymes such as proteasome inhibitors or tyrosine kinase inhibitors that affect critically in our cell cycles. And the limitation and resistance is almost same as the Sejin's presentation. So I'd like, uh, I want to finish my presentation here. Thank you. Okay, any question to Juan? One word Juan could not find with Chajokpa is, uh, Chajokpa then is an optimized, optimized system. Thank you. Any other question to Juan? Okay, if not, uh, let's finish here. Uh, before we move on, Sejin's presentation, Sejin mentioned uh, the DNA, inter uh, DNA alkylation can happen either intra-strand or inter-strand. Did you catch the meaning of an intra-strand and inter-strand? Tekjun, do you know the difference between intra versus inter? Oh, uh, I don't catch that word. And also, uh, the Juan also mentioned the intermolecular or intramolecular. Uh, Anybody knows? Tekjun, do you have an idea? I think intramolecular means uh, interact inside the molecule. Uh, say a little clearly. Uh, the molecules interact with DNA inside the DNA. The same molecule is an in intramolecular. Okay. One molecule has a two functional group and they interact together. That's an intramolecular. Same thing in DNA. 
intra-strand means from the same strand and different position can make binding that's intra-strand inter-strand means they have a double strand and they interact to each other that's the inter-strand oh. okay same thing for the intermolecular two different molecules interact with each other intramolecular which has a two functional group inside the molecule they interact like this this is intra this is inter okay 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 let's move up so third speaker is a young one and young one is a, uh, going to talk about metastasis migrating tumor to different site young -hun. Hello, my name is Chen Yongun, and today I will talk about the metastasis. Contents are like this. First of all, let me talk about the root of metastasis. Uh, first root is transchromic uh, root. Uh, there are many cavities in our body, and simply the cavity is the space between organs and the membrane which surrounds them. A uh, red circle the three one is the cavity which includes organs related to the digestion and red circle the four is the cavity for cavity which includes organs that are related to reproduction uh, for the for example of the transchromic root there can be a tumor in the ovary which is which is, belongs to the Less occurred the four cavity, and that tumor cell can penetrate the membrane of the membrane which include which surrounds the red four cavity, and then penetrate the membrane of the red occurred three cavity, and then that tumor cell can migrate to the surface of the river. Uh, this is one of the example of the transchromic metastasis, and. The most common root of metastasis is hematogenous and lymphatic metastasis. Uh, tumor cells can invade into lymphatic vessels or blood vessels by using MMP, and then that tumor cells can migrate to another place by the vessels, through, uh, through the vessels. And usually, blood vessels cover wider range than lymphatic vessels. And also, some lymphatic vessels' so pathway is lead uh, pathway lead to the blood vessels. So, in conclusion, maybe hematogenous metastasis is the most frequent root of the metastasis. And um, this is angiogenesis and lymphagiogenesis. And angiogenesis or lymphagiogenesis, lymphagiogenesis means the Formation of new lymphatic vessels or blood vessels uh, that which connect the tumor cells and the lymphatic vessels or blood vessels. By this lymphatic, by this angiogenesis and lymphagiogenesis, tumors can grow because they can get nutrients from vessels. Uh, and as I said, uh, hematogenous metastasis is the most frequent route. So I will talk about the angiogenesis. Angiogenesis, as I said earlier, is inevitable for the growth of tumor cells. And it can be done by several growth factors such as VEGF, PTGF, and EGF. And these VEGF, PTGF, and EGF are growth factors which are related to the formation of the new blood vessels. And Activation of those growth factors are related to the expression of tumor genes or tumor suppressing genes, which are in the DNA of the tumor cells. Maybe tumor suppressing genes is uh, switched up usually, and then these uh, growth factors such as VEGF, EGF, and PDGF will be activated. And firstly, I uh, I may have a uh, uh, may mistook uh, the step of the uh, metastasis. 
So I mean that the uh, destruction of ECM and basement membrane is the first process of metastasis and then angiogenesis or lymphogenesis can happen. Uh, because ECM and basement membrane is uh, surrounding the uh, blood vessels or lymphatic vessels, this uh, step is the first step. Uh, tumor cells can destroy extracellular matrix and basement membrane, which surrounds blood vessels, and they do this by using the enzyme named MMP. And uh, some uh, research research also said that this, uh, this is the a irreplace, irreplaceable step for the angiogenesis or lymphogenesis and the uh, MMP also is so to uh, are so to be impacted effective for the angiogenesis or lymphogenesis. Some uh, research researchers say that. And uh, uh, in a fully grown tumor cells then should migrate to another place and Tumor cells usually have lower affinity than normal cells or do not communicate much. And before and even for that, uh, they also have a better mobility due to the autocrine mobility factor. Uh, at the two stage, at the two stage class, one asked about the if the does not the normal cells can migrate to another place if the ECM and basement membrane is uh, destroyed. Uh, yes, they also can, but they have no harmful effect uh, as professors. But for the for the lower affinity or do not communicate much, and also tumor cells have better mobility, so maybe tumor cells will migrate more than normal cells. And this autocrine mobility factor is the pro protein that binds to the receptor of tumor cells, and they function like this. Uh, and then the tumor cells in the blood vessels are called circulating tumor cells. They usually form clusters or bind to platelets to survive from lymphocytes such as natural killer. And if these cells find a suitable place, then they form a tumor. And this metastatic tumor is called usually secondary tumor. And this one is also for maybe the answer for the two stage uh, questions about non-randomized metastasis. Uh, there are two theories for the non-randomized metastasis. First theory is C-dancer theory. C-dancer theory is the hypothesis that tumor cells can move to parts whose cells are similar to tumor cells. Uh, for example, there can be a tumor in the breast, and usually cells in the breast need calcium for the surviving. And so, the if tumor cells in the so tumor cells from breast cancer breast can have a tendency to migrate to bones, or because there are also much calcium in bone and. Second theory is filter and flow theory. It, this hypothesis is that the site of metastasis is usually influenced by the pathways, such as blood vessels or lymphatic vessels. For example, uh, if tumor cells, in, if large intestines have some tumor cells, and usually blood vessels from large intestine leads to liver, and so tumor cells also can be can have a tendency to grow on to migrate to liver uh, but these are just hypotheses and there are also many some counter examples for these theories thank you for listening to my presentation thank you Ellen. uh everybody any question for you one yeah, I have. Right. Go ahead. In case of the transcolumnic, could you see that per? In case of the transcolumnic metastasis, do they use MMP as well? And 
in case of the hematoglobin metastasis, they move follow the blood vessels and lymphatic vessels. But what about the transcolumnar metastasis move along? Uh, what do they move along? I, first of all, uh, I don't exactly know they use uh, they use uh, MMP because the usually the membrane the membrane of the cavities I don't know that membrane is the basement membrane or not so I actually don't know they use MMP or not but you might think that the transcolumnar root is uh, it little complicated to explain uh, but I as I as I searched about transcolumnar root, they don't take the root of the blood vessels or lymphatic vessels. Uh, they you the, the uh, but I cannot. I am not sure about the space that they move, but I think that it is not the blood vessels or lymphatic vessels. But I am not actual. I do not know the exact that they move. Well, let's be uh, the open-minded. Um, there may be some preferred uh, the mechanism. So in this case, the key point is different area of our body is kind of segregated and then blocked by some membrane structure, so-called the basement of the membrane. So that's how we can uh, see compartmented different area. If one tumor, one uncontrolled cell growth is happening only inside the one compartment, then we call them yangsung dongyang. That's the benign tumor. That's also growing, but if they do not uh, invade, then by breaking the basement of the membrane and invade other compartment, then it is a benign tumor. Once they break the basement and then invade a different area, now we call that's the axon dongyang. Okay, that's uh, the aggressive, uh, the bad tumor. So that's how they define, depending on the property of those tumors, whether they are inside one compartment or invading different compartment. So one example we have seen is the cancer cell can migrate through blood vessel or maybe lymph vessel. That's kind of a micro scale invasion, right? So in that case, maybe MMP is maybe the main player to break those, uh, the basement, micro basement. But once the tumor is growing very big and they contact the different area, there may be different enzymes can break up that barrier and invade. That may be also possible. So I assume both of them are possible. Which one is more dominant? That's the case by case. Any other question for Youngun? Youngun mentioned one time, um, autocrine, would you go to that page? Yes. He mentioned the autocrine, where is it? There's the third one, autocrine mobility. What is the autocrine? Anybody knows? What is the meaning of a crane? Other term for crane is endocrine or exocrine. Autocrine, what is autocrine? If nobody knows, Youngun, can you answer? What is autocrine? Um, autocrine means once the cells express the protein itself, this protein activates the cell's function. Okay, then can you redefine the meaning of a crane? Secretion. Crane is a secretion, okay. Here, auto means it's a self. Self secretion is the autocrine. But that means if you have a receptor, 
if one cell has a receptor, maybe the cell is waiting for ligand. Usually the ligand is uh, given by different cells. If it's a very uh, the nearby neighbors, or maybe very far away, and if it's a far away, then that ligand should, uh, should travel through maybe blood vessel. In that case, very far away, that's called paracrine. And autocrine means I secrete the ligand and I have the receptor. This kind of positive self-feedback, that's autocrine. So it is a rare, relatively, usually the communication is between different cells, but sometimes to boost myself, I secrete the activating ligand. That ligand is binding to my receptor and is kind of accumulating uh, the feedback, that's autocrine. Another term, plate read. Young, will you go that position? Uh, plate read. Okay. I think when you said the CTC picture. Okay, here. CTC cluster is usually binding to platelet. That's what Young said. What is a platelet? Also, fun. It's a hyosopan. What is a hyosopan? Uh, used for the ungo. Hyosopan is the cell? Uh, hyosopan is a smaller than cell. It has some membrane structure, but it doesn't have a genetic information. Smaller than red blood cell. It's kind of a fragment of the cells, but has uh, important uh, the functions. Now in this picture, so platelet is a shosopan we said. Now we see primary tumor site, and then they enter the bloodstream, and then they exit from secondary tumor. So last class, Doyun said, exit of blood vessel means moving into the different tissue site. Okay, this is how the cancer cell move from one side to, to the other. This is a micro scale, a very small scale. Okay. Now, blood vessel and lymph vessel. Can you go to that, uh, the picture? Lymph vessel picture. Looks like it's quite similar, the structure here. Now, angiogenesis. Angiogenesis means the genesis is, is a development, it's a helping. Angio means blood vessel. So angiogenesis is a blood vessel development, making new blood vessels, that's angiogenesis. We just studied today, alkylating reagent or any DNA blockers, that's one kind of a conventional cancer drug. The other kind is microtubule attacker or mitosis blocker. Those are two kinds of uh, cancer drugs. And new strategy for cancer drug, it was very popular for the last 10 years, is blocking the angiogenesis. So this approach is blocking the supply of material to the cancer site. Idea is quite attractive because Forming new blood vessels does not happen in normal tissues. That's why if you attack this kind of selective phenomena of cancer, it would be much less toxic than conventional other cancer drugs. Idea is a very attractive, but for the last 10, more than 10 years of a trial, seems like those drugs now work very well. So still, that does not mean that this is maybe hypothesis wrong, or maybe the drug is not efficient enough. I'm just telling you that this is a one more different mechanism of attacking cancers. Okay, DNA synthesis blocking, mitosis blocking, and blocking the angiogenesis. Now here another term, lymph angiogenesis. So that means lymph or the vessel or the formation. Here is a challenge of the patients. Blood vessels, is that circulating? 
yeah. in our body, blood vessels, blood goes in, pump out from heart, go to different tissues. And is that closed circulation system or open, open system? The question is, the blood cells, they always reside inside the blood vessel when they come back, or the blood vessels, they move out from the, uh, the blood vessel. And if it's a move out, then it's an open system. And if the blood, the blood cells are, stay inside the blood vessel, that's a closed system. What do you think? Open system. It's open system, you think? 100 to 200 years ago, the scientists believed that blood is not circulated. It's just a wasted, they move out, and then somehow it's a regenerated somewhere, and then they can be supplied. And later, they injected some material into vein, and then found that that material is circulating only inside blood vessel systems. Sajin mentioned this open system, maybe because some of those leukocytes, white blood cells, they can penetrate to go out, but that is quite exceptional cases. Only when they need, they can squeeze out by breaking some of those, uh, the, the gap, and then they move out only for emergency case. Normal cases, Blood system is circulating system. By dividing from the heart, okay? From heart moving out, we call artery from neck. After it reaches to the tissues, it becomes a very small tube, so-called Moseherwan capillary, but they are not open systems unless they are damaged. And most of those blood cells, they go into the capillary and they're recollected in vein, junk map, and they come back to the heart. Close the system. Close the circulation system. Now, if you think about, we have we live in our house, and we have the water supply, clean water coming into to, to our house, and then dirty water we send out. We call it sangsudo and hasudo. Sangsudo is a upstream. Hasudo is a downstream, okay? We call similar way the signal transduction pathways. First binding ligand is an upstream signal. After the signal is transferred inside the cell, that's the downstream, okay? Then we can tell heart is just an engine. Then the tissue is our home. Blood from heart is kind of a clean water. That's upstream blood. From tissue going out, sending out, those are relatively dirty water, dirty blood, going into the heart and then passes through lung and then it's re-cleaned and then resupplied. Okay, this is a recycling system. Then we can call artery blood is upstream, vein blood is downstream. Up to this part, it may be quite clear to you. It may not be difficult to understand. Real question is, how about the lymph vessel? Do you think a lymph vessel is a circulating system? No. Maybe you, Kei Toyun? No. No. So you guessed maybe something wrong from my tone, then you tell me, you tell us whether the lymphatic system is having only upstream or downstream. Uh, upstream only. Upstream only. It's a very good catch and good try, but wrong. Very interestingly, lymphatic system, it has only downstream. That means lymph start, lymph vessels start from the tissues. 
they started to collect all those material from tissues and collect it and collect it. And then they join into blood vessel just before they enter heart. That's quite funny, isn't it? Lymphic system is not a circulating system. There is a no supply to the lymph node. Lymph node is just a collecting material from the tissues. If different tissue has cancer, those are some of those cancer cells, they can move to the lymph node. Those are following those downstream. And once they reach near to the heart, those big collected lymph vessel, they join the big vein and then enter the heart. And then those mixed material just are supplied to the whole water, the whole of the blood systems and supplied to the whole tissue. So there is no upstream, the structure for lymph vessels. Lymph vessels is only half and it's a downstream. Okay, then next time if you see those are the cancer cells location and movement through lymph vessel, keep that in mind and then try to compare. Okay, now Yongun, would you take out, uh, take down your slide? Okay. My file. Okay, today we heard uh, the three talks, quite nice. And next week, so we heard the three talks today. Next class is uh, next uh, Tuesday, and then. Uh, this week's was a conventional cancer drugs, and next week we are going to move into targeted cancer therapy. Okay, same way uh, you will have the quiz or the small problems either by Tuesday, and assignment nine will be uh, there, and deadline is Wednesday. And one more thing, now it's time to start reading this book. I saved this book in uh, the library. But most of the you, most of you are at home. Maybe uh, someone and Sejin may be in competition if you want to use the book in the library. Someone, are you back home or you're still at school? Um, no, I'm home, but I can go to school and... Okay. Anyway, you cannot check out the book from the library. It is reserved for the whole semester. So you may compete with the Sejin Sanbei if you don't want to buy this book. Uh, but I recommend this book is a really good book. And based on this book, uh, you will prepare for uh, two weeks, three weeks later, the assignment. So I strongly recommend you buy. This is really worth buying uh, the book. Very well written and a lot of information there can be good reference for the next five to 10 years, I think. So I recommend you start reading this book, okay? Any other, other urgent question for today's class? Okay, then if not, not today is uh, exactly on time. So everybody has a good weekend and see you next week. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you professor. professor.